Strategic casting, what is it and who is it for? We're gonna break it down in three steps, research, casting, and collaboration. Step on in. My name is Dallas King, director, writer, and producer. I'm the owner of Red Rabbit Pictures, and I do specialize in what we call genre filmmaking, which is sci-fi, action, fantasy, and horror. It requires something very specific, and it's something we call strategic casting. Now, I have to put the disclaimer. What I'm about to say and share is not gonna apply to every film you're trying to do out there. What is strategic casting? When you are thinking about doing your feature film, your short film, your TV pilot, you're always thinking about who's gonna be the cast. Now, of course, we want Tom Cruise and Will Smith and Scarlett Johansson because they generate viewership. They generate marketing, publicity for the film, exposure, and probably because they're darn good actors. A lot of times, we can't afford them, so we have to be very strategic about who we put in our films. Now there is something on the rise in the industry and that is social media influencers. In general, a lot of these social media influencers are not professional actors, but they have incredible fan base on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, YouTube, etc., where fans are wanting to know about them. And that's a great start to why you wanna do strategic casting and bringing in social media influencers in your project. I'm gonna use a couple of my film projects, one notably Kiss Kiss, as a kind of a case sample to what I'm about to talk about. So we're gonna do it three steps. We're gonna start with research, casting, and then collaboration. Step one, research. When to cast, maybe an influencer, and when not to. I do genre films, and genre films are notoriously known for what we call ensemble casting. That is mixing around maybe three, four, five, six members who actually share the screen time for a majority of the film. Now, in comparison, something that maybe be a drama, a comedy, where it's actually led by one or maybe two main characters who are actually taking 90, 80% of the screen time, I would reconsider not casting a social media influencer in this role, just because it does require a great level of experience and that type of endurance. I mean, you're talking about a feature film that could be anywhere from 12 to 40 days of work. That's very taxing for someone that's just jumping into this and it's kind of all fresh to them. Now, where do we find them? I use four platforms, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Snapchat. I employed a couple associate producers, and together we all focused on researching and finding top 250 social media influencers that would fit in these roles. In our film, it was an action film. It was a lot of fighting. Well, it really helped that we found particular cast members that had experience in maybe martial arts, yoga. They were prior athletes, whether in college or high school. All these counted as them being athletic enough to run, to jump, to fake hit, etc. And that was a first qualifying factor for us. Now you're probably asking yourself, wait, I mentioned nothing about their ability to act. What about the acting? It is perhaps best not to mention the acting. Well, there is something that I call the Schwarzenegger strategy. Back in 1982, there was a film called Conan the Barbarian. And what they wanted was this actor who wasn't an actor yet, maybe a personality, and maybe you can say Arnold Schwarzenegger was the very first influencer that ever existed in film history. Arnold Schwarzenegger, 28 years old, six foot two, 240 pounds. Mr. Olympia for the past five years. He had a very thick accent, but he had the physicality, he had the uniqueness, and he had the personality. But how could you put him in a film if it's create lots of dialogue and interactions? Well, if you watch the film, there's something very unique about it. He was almost completely silent in the film. And that's because they casted him for what he looked and his presence on the film and how he was able to wield the sword. Now the step two, actually casting them. Now here's the real challenge. If they have thousands, hundreds of thousands, tens of millions of fans, you can guarantee that they are being contacted every day. So how do you stand apart? 
but I'm different than those other guys, Phil. There's one way to do, and that's how you present yourself. Because all we care about is getting fucking rich. So let's say we do an email. We want to be able to craft a letter that's very professional, maybe has some links of your website, maybe a reel of your past work, maybe an even concept poster of what you're trying to create, and in some cases, maybe even a lookbook of what the film's about. And there is one little asset adding onto your information, and that is, is this paid or not paid? In fact, it's so important, you may want to put that at the subject heading of your email or your message. Fox, I don't care about love, all I care about is money. That's all I want, baby. Now here's one little trick. If you get one of these influencers casted, maybe ask, hey, who do you know of our list that we're contacting? Or maybe you can suggest someone that we overlook. Now you do have to be mindful of some red flags. We got some red flags to cover. So in our case of Kiss Kiss, I asked some very specific questions such as, are you ready to be covered in blood for 10 days straight? And be in the cold for 12 hours? It's getting quiet. And roll around in the dirt and fight. Because you don't want to get down the road on day eight and they walk off the set because they can't handle it. Fuck, that's it, I'm out of here. Oh, come on, dude. Another red flag that you need to find out is about what they want. Example, maybe they wanna be put up in a four-star hotel and they wanna have first class on the flight. And there's one thing I always very much encourage filmmakers and producers and directors to say, is be transparent. Because the worst thing to do is to promise something and not deliver. Wah, wah. No, I have dropped the ball. I did promise that and I haven't delivered. There's always a negotiation process in doing this. It could be pay rate. Something in the film industry that's very common is to offer talent a percentage of the profit when the film does make money. I guess that concludes negotiations. Step three, collaboration. Now the first part of that collaboration is actually the working with the influencers on the marketing and publicity of the project. I would encourage first that the filmmakers have a strategy of how they envision marketing the film and then working together. And you may find they have way more experience in this category than you do and can offer some very, very good ideas on how to get the most exposure for your film. No indies, E. Now for Kiss Kiss, we actually had somebody on our team that was a social media director. And he was able to create and craft a very unique plan for what we were gonna do in the long term. Part of that plan was to have a videographer and a photographer on set for every day. Their whole responsibility was thinking about the marketing that was gonna happen months and years down the line so that we can have it. So what we were able to do is put down in writing a rough draft of what was expected from the influencers at the bare minimum to do, to share to all their fans and to get engagement. Keep in mind, you casted non-professional actors. That is a challenge, but that's still no reason to not get a great performance out of them. Oh, why, Lisa, why, why? So it's really important to one, establish confidence, establish trust, and that communication. In Kiss Kiss, we had two weeks preparation. In that time, we had wardrobe and costume fitting, makeup tests, and because it's an action film, we had stunt and fight training. It was in this period that I was able to really see whether the talent had what it takes to be the character. I did have to recast a lot of the talent. So I really, really encourage you always have a backup plan. As an example, I may cast for a character in one sense, and I may have two or three backups. I didn't tell those backups yet that they didn't or did have the part. Keep them on the line and maybe keep them on the line to the very, very first day of shooting because you just never know and it's called Murphy's Law. Murphy's Law? Well, Murphy's Law doesn't mean that something bad will happen. What it means is that whatever can happen will happen. So we come to the end. Strategic casting is a very, very non-traditional way, especially in this age of digital filmmaking. But it's not to say that traditional casting doesn't still work. In fact, in my own casting, I did have my talent come into a room. I had them read in front of me. I had them paired up with other actors and all together to see how they vibed off each other. With that, I leave you with this. Always, always prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Have a backup plan. Backup plan. Have a strategy. Hopefully, if you're gonna venture down the rabbit hole of strategic casting, you'll remember research, casting, and collaboration. This is Dallas King signing off. 
Please, if you like this video, subscribe for more videos, more information, and we'll see you next time. Out.